Can a metabolic condition such as diabetes alter the biomechanics of the Achilles tendon during walking? A study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology looked at the Achilles tendon function during walking in subjects with diabetes compared to healthy subjects who did not have diabetes. The study included 56 total participants, 13 had diabetes with a peripheral neuropathy, 20 just had diabetes without the peripheral neuropathy, and then there was also 23 healthy controls included as well. What the study found is that there was decreased elongation of the Achilles tendon during the landing phase of walking. They also found that there was decreased tendon recoil during the propulsion phase of walking in those with diabetes, either with neuropathy or without neuropathy, compared to the control group. The primary reason why this occurred was that they found that the Achilles tendon in those with diabetes had increased stiffness and a higher loss of energy called hysteresis in the tendons and basically what this means is that the tendons of those with diabetes were less efficient springs than they should normally be. Diabetes causes non-enzymatic glycation of the soft tissues including the tendon. This leads to increased cross-linking between the fibers and as a result greater stiffness in the tendon. So when we're talking about walking if the tendon's more stiff, it means the muscles have to work harder to not only absorb, but also produce the forces necessary for walking. So for those with diabetes, the energy demands for walking are greater than for a healthy individual. The study also found that the maximum isometric force that the calf muscles could produce was significantly decreased in the groups with diabetes compared to the control group. And this reduction in force increased as the foot went through dorsiflexion. So the greater dorsiflex the foot was, the less force that the calf muscles could produce. So during walking, this means that as the Achilles tendon and the lower body is transitioning to the propulsion phase, not only is the Achilles tendon not recoiling as much energy, so it's not being as efficient, it's also not able to generate as much force as a healthy tendon could. This study shows that biomechanical conditions and metabolic conditions are actually related. We generally like to think that they're separated, so uh, metabolic conditions such as diabetes won't affect the biomechanics, but this study clearly shows that a metabolic condition like diabetes actually does change the biomechanics. While the study didn't include participants with Achilles tendinopathy, there is some research that suggests that there's an association between metabolic conditions and tendinopathy. So when we're creating a rehab program for somebody with tendinopathy, we want to make sure that we're taking nutrition and diet into account because if there's something metabolically that's actually driving this issue, we want to make sure that we're addressing that. And if we think that there's something like diabetes, we want to make sure that we're diagnosing that and treating it appropriately because that can actually be a barrier to recovery. I'm not aware of any research that's looked at whether these structural changes in the tendon associated with diabetes is reversible or if it's permanent. If they are reversible, that's great because what that means is that strengthening the calf muscles would not only be able to help the structural integrity of the tendon, but it would also be beneficial in controlling the diabetes as well. If those structural changes are permanent, it's okay because when we look at some of the tendinopathy research, we're not always able to change the actual structural integrity of the tendon, but we can build more tendon around it so it could be just as strong and just as efficient. In summary, this study shows that we need to treat the body as a whole. Nothing works in complete isolation. Biomechanical issues can actually be driven by metabolic conditions. So when we're treating somebody, we need to make sure that we're taking a thorough history and examination so that we can make sure that we see any potential barriers, whether they're biomechanical or metabolic in nature, and that we can treat the person fully so they can make a full recovery. Thank you for watching this episode on diabetes and the biomechanics of the Achilles tendon. I hope that you found this information useful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. You can also hit the bell icon as well to be notified when I post future videos. I'll see you guys in the next episode.